risk assessment. So uh, here you can see this is a, a hazard. Uh, as players may, uh, or as they're running, they may count their fingers in, so while are in the corner. So uh, a good way of restricting this would be maybe to have the area a bit closer in, so to restrict this, so that people won't be going across this area. Uh, the hazard, well, I would say you could get a minor injury for this, or maybe even um, a more severe injury, as uh, participants may be able to break their fingers, so that's quite a big risk. Uh, the probability of it happening, well, depending on where the like, participants are running, it would be quite high, as if they're running here and being pushed away, they may trap their fingers. So, uh, yeah, uh, really the way to just stop this hazard from happening. Uh, is just to move the players into a smaller area or just yeah basically that here so today I'll be doing a risk assessment on the rubber crumb pitch so uh, the risk at the moment uh, sorry the hazard at the moment is the goalpost as it's in the middle of the pitch uh, the chances of people getting injured well I would say it's it's quite low as it's like very visible people can see it but if somebody tripped into it they can get like a minor injury or a burn from the, the rubber crumb as you can get like a carpet burn. Um, the way to um, deal with this risk would be to move the goalposts back to the side where the fence is over there. Uh, you could do that with, like you could do that with help from the coach. Okay today I'm gonna be doing a risk assessment on the rubber crumb pitch. So the today the hazard is uh, this goalpost as it's out in the middle of the pitch. So the chances of this risk quite low as uh, it's very visible and it's, got, you know, it's quite big so people will be able to see it but um, the severity of the risk I would say is about a two or a three as people could trip trip over the post or the net and they could uh, get a, a scratch or a, a friction burn off the floor or obviously if they run in the wrong position they might like, I don't know, like hurt themselves by I don't know, dislocating something or breaking their leg, which is unlikely, but it could happen. Uh, the way to deal with this situation would be to move the goalpost back to the fence, which is over there, or to make people aware of this situation and to uh, show them that they shouldn't be running around this area as they could also trip over the net, which could also cause an injury. Uh, now I'm going to be doing a risk assessment for the rubber crumb pitch, which is down here. So. Um, as uh, the whole pitch is covered in rubber crumb and this uh, sort of surface which is quite rough there's a chance of the um, participants falling over or tripping or scraping their knees or falling which can cause um, friction burns and uh, the chance of this happening is actually quite high as they're running around a lot uh, the severity I would say it's around a two uh, as you can get burns um, and the way to deal with the situation would be to like obviously encourage people to not like run into each other and to make them more aware that they could fall over and like have friction but so this will help with the situation. I'm going to be doing another risk assessment. This is for the fire exits. As you can see around there's uh, there's only a few exits so there's one over there which is locked at the moment and there's another one over there and that's about the only one that's open. So um, this could be a hazard if there's a fire. So um, what the coach will need to do is obviously um, show them to that direction, but this can cause like some delay if, if people are at, right, right at the very end, so they won't have a quicker, safer route. So uh, the severity of this could be like really high, like a five or a, yeah, a, f a round of five, as this could be fatal. Um, the way of dealing with the situation would be maybe to isolate the people around the area so they'll be near all the exits. I'll be doing another risk assessment for the road crumb pitch, and that would be the weather. So um, if there's uh, bad weather, so it could be raining or snowing or even thunder, this could be um, quite dangerous as uh, obviously they have different, they would have different stages, so lightning could be fatal, snow you could be tripping. Uh, or get really cold and numb. Uh, with the rain, you'll be um, more likely to slip. So this will cause injuries such as friction burns or falling over and sc uh, scraping your leg. Or even if you land in the wrong position, you can have more severe injuries. Uh, the way to deal with this situation would be to only allow participants to go outside 
when the weather is nice or to encourage them to wear the correct kit. So if it's a cold day, they'll need to wear tracksuit bottoms and more suitable wear. Uh, if it's snowing, uh, most likely to just stop the session and, light and lightning would definitely be to stop the session as this could cause death, which is very like, dangerous and fatal. For the risk assessment, I'm going to be doing the weather again, but this time it'll be for good weather. So even though if the weather is good, there could still be a risk to it. And um, so the risk, so let's say if it was really sunny, uh, the participants will be able to get sunburn or have a sunstroke. So um, this will be quite dangerous. So the severity of this happening would be quite high. Uh, I would say around a four. So not not fatal, but it would have like it could bring somebody to hospital. So it's it's um, could have a, like a very bad injury. Um, well, the way to deal with this situation would be to tell the participants to, if it's a sunny day, to bring sun cream or suitable clothing so they wouldn't be wearing track suits as that would be too hot, or to wear uh, really thin uh, short shirts. Um, and if somebody, oh yeah, of course, uh, to bring uh, bottled water as well to every session so um, they'll be able to keep hydrated so they won't faint. I'll be holding a risk assessment for the rubber crumb bridge today. So, uh, the first thing, the risk, the hazard, sorry, will be uh, rubbish on the floor. Uh, this could be a trip hazard, and um, this could, as a severity, would be, uh, I would say, around a one or a two, as this could just cause trips and minor friction burns from the rubber crumb pitch. Um, or if you trip over, you can might hurt yourself and have bruises. Uh, the way to deal with this, with this situation would be to clear up the litter uh, before the session. Um, another cost-effective way would be to have signs up that would just say, uh, please put the litter away. Uh, but uh, another way but that would be more costly would be to have more bins around the area because this would encourage people to put the r rubbish in the bins if they don't have one near them instead of just littering. Okay, now I'm going to be doing another risk assessment for the indoor in the Radwell Centre. Um, this will be the tram lines over here. So as you can see, um, if there were people, there were if there were participants running around playing, let's say basketball or a really fast-paced game, and they were pushed against the wall, they would be able to get an injury. So they might be able to, I don't know, they would, might I don't know, hit their heads, which would be quite a high uh, severity. So they would get a minor injury, or they could uh, trip over here and then once again uh, hit something against the wall, or maybe I don't know. Uh, trap their fingers like that. Um, the way to deal with the situation would be to put cones around, which would be the, the cheapest way of doing it, as cones, as cones would be a good resource. Uh, what they would do, you just put cones around the area where you would like the participants to play instead of having them near the tram line, which is close to the wall. Uh, the probability of this risk happening would be uh, quite I would say quite medium, so around maybe a three, uh, as um, people will be running around a lot, and if they're close to the wall, they will get uh, they might uh, get the the sorry the hazard, the risk. Yeah. So uh, and I'm going to be doing in for the indoor facility in the Radmore Centre. So uh, here's the plug socket. Uh, the um, the risk is that if there are children running around, they might. Uh, put their fingers in there and get electrocuted so this would be a very high um, risk as this could cause death if, if they're electrocuted uh, so the severity is quite high uh, I'll give that around a 4 or a 5 rating um, the ch probability of this happening would be I would say quite medial so maybe a 3 as uh, really you wouldn't expect kids to be in this sort of area so you'd you'd have like teenagers, so they would be more mature and they would like they would, they would know not to stick their fingers in the plug sockets. Uh, the way to deal with this situation would be to cover the, the socket area here uh, with a cover, or to restrict players from going uh, or participants to, uh, from going near this area. Um, the cost, the more costly way would be to um, maybe get get this removed from this area, or uh, have or like plaster plaster the wall. I'm going to be doing a risk assessment for the indoor facility in the Radmore Centre. So I'm going to be doing the goalpost. As you can see, there's there's net here, which is uh, which could cause uh, which could be a hazard, as participants may uh, while running 
uh, may trip over by catching their leg there. Um, the way to deal with this situation would be to uh, remove the nets, uh, which that would take a lot of effort, or to maybe um, restrict this area from the players, so or to warn them if they're playing near that area, the coach could say to uh, be, uh, be wary of the nets as they could fall over. Uh, the probability uh, would be, uh, I'll say, around a three, so it's, it's, quite, uh, it's quite a high probability as uh, if people are running around this area or being pushed in that area, they could just get the trap, the, the legs trapped. Yeah. Oh, yeah um, and the dangers of this, so the, the, the actual the risk, um, the severity of it could be that they um, may trip over and have Let's say, like on the surface, you might be, you might have like a burn or a minor injury. Let's say if you fell in a wrong, in a wrong position and you hurt yourself, or you could bruise. I'll be doing another risk assessment for the indoor facility in the Radmore Centre. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the floor here, it might be quite slippy. So the severity of this risk would be uh, quite high, as uh, people well, it would be around a two, as um, participants may trip over and burn them, uh, have a friction burn, or fall over in a bad position and hurt themselves or, bru or get bruises. Uh, the way to deal with this situation would be to, if it, if the floor, if it was a wet floor, uh, to put a yellow sign up to warn the players and the participants that um, this place is wet so that they could have the risk of slipping. Um, so an, uh, another way to deal with the situation would be to just totally avoid this area, so to move the participants around so they would play in a, a more restricted area where they wouldn't have this uh, hazard to deal with. Another risk would be uh, this fan over here as you can see. So uh, the probability of the risk happening, um, sorry, the risk would be that uh, participants may be going over there and trap their fingers or fall into it. So the, the probability of this happening could be quite high as participants will be running a lot. Um, the severity would be, I would say, around a three as people could trap their fingers and maybe dislocate or, or even break their fingers. And this could also cause them like to trip over if they got themselves trapped. Um, the way to deal with this situation would be to um, uh, restrict the players from going into that, situ going into that situation where they're close to the wall. And a more costly way would be to just totally plaster or to move uh, the fans from that area. Okay, so right now um, I'm in an indoor facility and what I'll be doing a risk assessment on is these benches over here. So as we can see, there's uh, two benches right here. Uh, the the risk is that a participant sitting on the bench or running around may trip over or fall backwards and uh, they could hit them, their heads against the wall or against this bench here. So uh, the severity of this would be uh, a rate of hit around a four over five as uh, the participant may fall over and cause a head injury. So uh, this could cause them to like, go to the hospital, have a concussion and uh, stay out of play. Uh, the chances of this happening, I'd say, is quite high, around a 4 or 5 again, uh, as uh, participants are running around all over this indoor facility, and there's quite a lot of benches like, all over here. So um, the, the chance of this happening is very high. Uh, so the way to get rid of this problem would be to either move the benches and put them in the indoor facility. And um, the overall score would be to... The, the overall score would be around, I'll say, a 5 or a 6, as... Um, with a very high probability and this could cause quite a severe injury. Okay, now I'm in the indoor facility. As we can see here, there's a, a fire exit and there's this ring here blocking it. So the severity of this would be quite high, like a range of five or a six, as this could, um, like if there wasn't a case of a fire, you, this caused death. So it is like a very high risk. Um, so the hazard is this ring over here. And the way to overcome this would be to make sure that before a session, to move this out the way so you would have clear access to the fire exit if a fire did happen. Um, so the, the actual probability of this happening would be uh, quite low because it's an indoor facility and it's not, there's quite a low chance for somebody to have like a lighter indoors or to smoke indoors. So the, it's quite, the probability is quite low, but the severity will be very high. So another variation of uh, getting rid of this problem would be, well, this fire exit at the moment is cleared off. I mean, sorry, it's not cleared off. It's, it's covered by this uh, ring here. So what we could do is move this out the way just by moving it and then that will have a clear exit. Or the, the coach or the person leading people out towards the fire exit could move them to the 
the different indoor facility where they could take the other fire exit, which is clear and safe for people to use.